Hey, what's up? This is your boy Lee Black from Real Talk for Real Men, also coming to you with TFG Ratchet. And let's talk about the State of the Union address that happened last night. In case you did not watch, President Biden delivered a close to three hour speech, uh, supposedly covering where we are as a country and hopefully uh, basically making his case for a second term. And so the State of the Union is typically an address that's supposed to be bipartisan, where the president is laying out his agenda for what's next to come. Also, of course, letting us know as Americans how we're doing, how the country is faring, what direction we're heading in, and things of that nature. So this picture, in my opinion, accurately captions what this address was really all about. For me, it was one big yelling match. It was more like a Democratic convention than it was a State of the Union. When I think of the State of the Union address, I think of our presidents being presidential, um, speaking to us in an articulate, intelligent, calm manner, delivering a solid plan on why we should be voting for you again. Also bringing us in a realistic depiction of what we're going through as Americans and what you're going to do to make sure to preserve our way of life, to make it better, and what is the plan? There should be a solid plan in place. Now, I didn't see that. As I'm watching the news today, many of the Democrats feel like he hit on all cylinders. In case you've been under a rock, President Biden has been criticized heavily, even on, on, not only on his policy, but even on things about his age. He's 81 years old, and even his cognitive ability has been called into question. And from what I witnessed, I think that that was the strategic plan. He went out there with a plan in place to show the American people that he had some type of vigor and vim and that he can, as the fight still is in him, so that if you're looking at the choice between him and Donald Trump, I am your guy. Now, when it came to actually discussing the State of the Union, let me tell you the takeaways that I got from it. On this subject of taking on Trump directly, would I say he addressed that? Yeah, I think he did his job in that, that regard. Um, I think he showed in many ways that he can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but we didn't learn anything new. He never referred to Trump directly. He kept using the term, my predecessor, my predecessor this, my predecessor that. And, but he never in any ways gave me, if I'm a potential voter, any real reason to show that there's any differences between two old men yelling at the sun. Let's talk about his issues on reproductive rights. Uh, in case you haven't been following, the Supreme Court has been stacked by Republicans with decisions that have now gone adversely against what women want. We've reversed Roe versus Wade. Many states are dealing with issues with in vitro fertilization, uh, with abortion rights. Uh, effectively, you've got a bunch of old white men sitting in judgment about a woman, what she can do with her body. And I don't feel like he said anything last night to address those things other than the status quo that it won't happen on my watch and da 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 la da 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 But I heard a lot, a lot of bullshit, just to be honest with you. Three, economic policies. He talked about last night about how many hidden policies or ones that go unnoticed that we just don't see happening that in many ways has made our lives better. Where? Show me where. I don't need shit buried into bills that don't affect my everyday life. I'm a, a regular American. I know what it looks like when I go to the grocery store, when I go to the gas station, and when I pay my fucking rent here in this overpriced price rat trap here in Atlanta, Buckhead. If you're not going to talk to me about policies that take the stress off of that, you're just whistling shit in the wind. And I don't think I'm alone when I say that. Gas prices, food prices, rent prices, student loan debt. You said nothing last night to make me feel in any way that you're going to address that to my satisfaction. Let's talk about um, border security. <sighs> His policies have been called into question. In some ways, I'm going to give him a pass on this one because he did highlight that it is the Republicans that are playing this whole name game and even shut down policies that would have addressed that successfully. Now, do I believe that he has any real answers? Hell no. 
but I believe this one is kind of a standoff that is just more bullshit uttered by both sides because the reality, folks, is nobody was to, knows what to do effectively about border control. If I was in charge, this is where I do agree with Donald Trump. America should be put first. We open our doors to any and everyone, and we treat the ones that come in better than American citizens. That's my belief. If you don't believe me, just go look up yourself all of the policies and benefits that are afforded to migrants who've never put one fucking red cent into our social security plan and they qualify for things that I can't even qualify for. Now, somebody makes sense of that to me, you get the grand prize. I've been here all my fucking life and I can't get certain things, but there are people who have been brought here and a lot of them are criminals and they still have more benefits than me. But that's the American way. And lastly, let's talk about his policies on the Middle East. We're embroiled in uh, that conflict over there. And of course, uh, he has conflicts himself with Netanyahu. And so a lot of the people don't like his policies when it comes to uh, how he deals with the Middle East and uh, Ukraine and Israel and shit like that. Look, folks, let me keep it honest with he with here. Until we get America straight, I really don't give a shit about what's happening in another country. I've always objected to the fact that the game we're playing is absolute insanity. We spend and send billions of dollars instead of spending it right here at home. Last time I checked, there's veterans that need support. There's single mothers that need support. There's people that's without houses, our homeless issue. Babies go to bed hungry here, goddammit. Not to mention our firemen, our police, our teachers, they're not paid what they should be paid, and they do an important job. I'm a taxpayer, and I'm a single guy. You come for my fucking money first. Highways, roads, technology, when it comes to transportation, these are things that those billions of dollars could be spent, spent right here at home. I object to the fact that we're fucking sending people to the moon, but we can't get shit right right here on Earth. Folks, this is exactly why I do my very best to try to stay neutral, but of course I'm a human being, I'm affected by the policies, and I'm an opinionated SOB, so this is the shit that I say that come from me and me alone. Overall, if you ask me to give a grade on last night's speech, I give it a C. Did you come out and show that you had a little bit of fire in your belly? Sure, but how much fucking fire we expect from an 81-year-old man? Did you address anything of really, of really important? Not really. I, to me, you didn't talk about the State of the Union. You had a strategic plan to come out and show that all your fucking marbles were still there. And I, for one, am still not convinced that that's the case. The way I look at it, you got two candidates on both sides in their fucking 80s. Neither one are qualified to run a Walmart, let alone this country. That's what I say. This has been another TFG Ratchet moment, and I'm your boy, Lee Black. Please continue to subscribe, hit that notification bell, because this shit is far from over, and of course I'm going to have more to say. God bless.